Fifteen years ago, on July 1st, 1960, the Marshall Space Flight Center was established as a field center of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration. It began with a nucleus of people who were transferred from the U.S. Army Ballistic Missile Agency at Redstone Arsenal. Two months later, President Dwight D. Eisenhower officially dedicated the center, and Mrs. George C. Marshall unveiled a bust of the former soldier statesman and Nobel Prize winner in whose memory the center is named. A number of space programs were also transferred from the Army to the new NASA center, including Explorer satellites, Mercury Redstone launch vehicles, and the Saturn Development Project. Dr. Werner von Braun was the first director of MSFC. The nucleus of 4,200 civil service employees who transferred from the Army grew within five years to 7,200. Redstone tanks and Jupiter tanks and engines were clustered to form a Saturn I booster providing one and a half million pounds of thrust the world's largest known booster at that time. The 10 scheduled research and development flights of the Saturn I were all successful. As a bonus, the last three flights carried Pegasus meteoroid detection satellites into Earth orbit. With a new, more powerful second stage, the Saturn I became the Saturn IB. This second-generation vehicle was used for testing the Apollo spacecraft and was the first Saturn to carry men into Earth orbit. Development of the Saturn V came after President John F. Kennedy on May 25, 1961, set a national goal. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. This was the birth of Project Apollo. The Marshall Center obtained manufacturing facilities in New Orleans and built a test site in nearby southern Mississippi. Soon, more than 100,000 contractor personnel in industry across the country were engaged in the Saturn project. The first huge boosters developing 7.5 million pounds of thrust were built and tested at the Marshall Center. Then, as the world watched, on July 20th, 1969, men first landed on the moon. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Altogether, 12 astronauts were lifted from Earth by Saturn V's to walk on the moon and explore its surface. And the three final Apollo crews were given increased mobility on the lunar surface through another Marshall Center development, the Lunar Roving Vehicle, which carried astronauts several miles from their landing sites across rugged terrain. Turn sharp. I have no desire to turn sharp. <laughs> okay, here's a sharpie. Hey, that's great. And those things, when, it, when those wheels really dig in, Don John, when you turn, it's when you get the rooster tail. Soon after completion of the final Apollo mission to the moon, a two-stage Saturn V orbited Skylab, America's first space station. The Marshall Center provided the orbital workshop, built from a Saturn vehicle third stage, the solar observatory instruments, and many of the experiments. The meteoroid shield and one solar wing were lost from Skylab during launch, causing an overheating problem and reduced electrical power. NASA personnel and contractors worked around the clock for several days to develop sunshades for Skylab and procedures for freeing a stuck solar array wing for making Skylab livable. Eleven days later, a Saturn 1B carried the first crew to Skylab and the necessary work was accomplished to make Skylab a very successful program. Two other three-man crews followed, and Skylab was inhabited for 171 days of experiments in solar astronomy, Earth resources, biomedicine, and other areas. Marshall has also been active in translating space technology into beneficial products and medical capabilities which can improve the quality of life for all mankind.
Marshall is working with the new Energy Research and Development Agency on a program for using solar energy for heating and cooling. Dr. William R. Lucas, who has been with the Marshall Center since its beginning and who is now its director, has this comment. The accomplishments of the Marshall Space Flight Center during the past 15 years have been historic indeed. They include the development of the Saturn family of launch vehicles that placed man on the moon and made possible the Skylab space station, which allowed astronauts to conduct pioneering scientific work in space for almost half a year. These are contributions to the nation and to the world in which Marshall Center employees justly take pride. And now we look forward to equally significant contributions in the world's first international manned space mission, the Apollo-Soyuz test project, to be achieved within a few days. To the development of a new space transportation system, including the space shuttle. To collaboration with several countries of Western Europe in developing the space lab. To the development of the High Energy Astronomy Observatory to development of the Large Space Telescope and other important and exciting projects of future years. 